title of my message today is All Roses Have Thorns. Oh, yes. All Roses Have Thorns. Maybe you can say, well, not all roses have thorns, but uh, anyways, it's the title of my message. If we have a hybrid rose, uh, they don't have thorns. But if, if it's a natural rose, all roses have thorns. And I like to uh, talk about family and relationship. And um, I would like to start by uh, talking uh, about uh, this man. He was reading the newspaper, it was breakfast time, and uh, his wife uh, came over and she looked at him and he, she said, I bet you don't know what day is it today. And when the, when the wife says something like this, you know, we better think of what's going on. So he said, of course I know what, what's going on. So very embarrassed, he went out and he went to, to, the, to the flower shop and he ordered you know, some red roses to send to, to his wife. And he thought to, to herself, is it her birthday? Is it, the, is it her anniversary? No, I don't think it is. Is it the, the birthday when we met? So he thought, well, let me buy also a, a, a tennis bracelet. <laughs> so because, you know, she was so excited. And so, so uh, you know, men are like this. I, I once forgot uh, my wife's birthday. It was very, really bad. You know, <laughs> it's really bad. So, so he got so embarrassed. So on the way home, he still thought, well, I, I'll better buy also a box of chocolates. And, and so he arrives home and he has the flowers, he has the, the jewelry, the box of chocolates, and, and the wife looks at him and all happy and said, oh, I'm so glad. Listen, honey, this is the best Groundhog Day of my life. <laughs> I don't need to celebrate Groundhog Day here. <laughs> no? no? Oh, just in Ontario and Quebec, we celebrate Groundhog Day. <laughs> and when the Groundhog comes, uh, in that day we know winter is over. Uh, I guess here they die during winter. <laughs> Anyways, that's my, my joke of the day. And, uh, and it was, uh, <laughs> you don't have summer, that's why. You don't have summer, there's no Groundhogs here. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, all roses have thorns, and I like to talk about uh, the beauty of our relationships. And when we have a relationship between uh, family members, and I want to talk about couples, but not just this is not just for couples. So if you're single, or if you're dating, or uh, even uh, you know if you're not yet in a relationship, these are important things. And red roses are symbols of love, and white roses symbolize purity. And we use roses for different occasions. I like to give roses to my wife. Now I need to be careful because I was going to her office often. Uh, she works as an accountant and I was going there very often to give her flowers. And one of the colleagues told her, you know, there's something wrong with your husband. He must be, probably he's doing something wrong because no man comes to give flowers just for the sake of giving flowers. He did something wrong. And, <laughs> and, uh, and she laughed and she said, no, no, he just likes and enjoys giving me flowers. But now I don't give her as many flowers because I don't want the folks at the work to think that I'm doing something wrong or whatever. But we use roses and, um, and uh, roses are very special and uh, we, we know they, they have thorns uh, and uh, I, I try to, to know why they have thorns. I was watching TV yesterday a little bit at, at the hotel and they showed this uh, uh, chimpanzee and the monkey retirement place. Uh, they have in the United States, they, they created with government funds, they have a retirement place for chimpanzees. And one of the things they do for the animals, they give them red roses so they can eat the red roses. And, and so the cheap chimpanzees love to eat the roses. But one of the reasons roses have thorns is so animals won't eat them. And another reason uh, so they say, people that are experts, it's because, like these roses can climb uh, above the other flowers and get the sun that they, they need. And, uh, and the uh, uh, rose bush can go really, really high. I don't know if, uh, if you have roses in your, in your garden. But uh, roses are a symbol of strength and beauty. And I like to start by reading a scripture in Song of Solomon. And uh, on chapter 5 and verse 1, and this is a prophetic writing, and uh, it says, My bride, my sister, I will come to my garden, I will gather my myrrh and my spice, 
I will eat my honey cup with my honey. I will drink my wine, <clears throat> excuse me, with milk. Eat, my friends, drink and become intoxicated with expressions of love. It's, it's kind of a different scripture. And uh, uh, it's accepted that in this scripture there's prophetic words from Jesus Christ, the groom, to the church, the bride. But he talks about a relationship, and there's all these, I, I believe it's, uh, you know, Jewish, uh, Jewish expressions. You know, I have expressions of love to my wife. I like to tell her, you are the syrup in my pancake, <laughs> and, and stuff like this, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and we, we relate things that, that we, <laughs> is that sweet, eh? <laughs> She's the, the syrup of my pancake, and, and uh, you, you are the apple of my eyes. And, and people say these things, and uh, uh, some are funny like this one. Uh, and here in the Bible we see things that I really don't understand, drinking milk with wine. Uh, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll rather have the milk, and some of you will rather have the wine. But it's something that we usually don't mix. But these are expressions of love. There's a significance behind it. But I would like to mention this fact that uh, when we have a relationship, here talks about two relationships between uh, man and woman. One is uh, wife, and another one, or bride, another one is sister. So tell me, what, what is she? Is she bride or is she a sister? Wow. You don't get married with your sister. That's disgusting. You don't think about it. So, what is he talking about? You know that once uh, uh, Abraham was uh, passing by, I, I, I believe it was Moab. It wasn't Moab, it was another place. And, um, and the king looked at Sarah and, and he thought, wow, this is a great woman to, to put in my uh, in, in my collection, and he had a collection of women. <laughs> and so he went to Abraham, and, uh, and Abraham was really afraid, and he asked, Who is this woman? Oh, she's my sister. But uh, actually it was his wife. <laughs> and uh, you know the story, if you don't know, go, go and read it. But it says that then God gave a, a terrible dream to that man and revealed you're about to die. You're as good as dead, because you took another man's wife and he came to Abraham really, uh, you know, upset and said, You lied to me. You told me it was your sister and she's your wife. He wasn't lying. He wasn't lying. And we see the revelation uh, here further uh, because, listen, if we are God's children, if you're a child of God, yeah. your wife is your sister in the Lord. In Christ. Yeah. In Christ. All right? Yeah. Are you getting it? Yeah. Okay. So when, when we have a, a, a husband-wife relationship, we have a couple, and we, we come to church, we've got children, remember this, guys, she's your wife, but she's also your sister. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me develop a, a little bit uh, on, on this. But, but this to tell you that us fathers, when we have a, a baby girl, you better treat that girl well. Yes. Otherwise, you're in trouble with me. Oh, yes. Do you get it? Oh, yeah. So, question is, how do you treat your, your wife? How do you treat, you know, your, your girlfriend? Well, that was sweet, that picture. So, how do you treat your wife? You know, we have to understand that in Christ, she's your sister. And if you mistreat her, you're in trouble. Guess with whom? With the father. With the father. And this is why we also read in the, um, uh, that the father of the bride will get really, uh, can I say this, upset, <laughs> you know, and uh, there's this uh, scripture in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7, husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner, as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Amen. By other words, guys, if you mistreat your wives, you're in trouble with the father of the bride. And not only that, you pray and there's no answer. Yeah. Now, if I pray and there's no answer, I better stop praying, because there's no use in praying, right? Now, that's the reason why some people stop coming to church or they don't believe in God, because they pray, there's no answer, 
there, therefore there is no God. There is a God, but you better be in right standing with Him. So if you have a relationship, uh, you know, you need to know God will get really upset and your prayers can be hindered. So before you can have a good intimate relationship with your wife, you need to treat her as a friend or as a sister and respect your wife. And the thing is, if you got married because of money, because of her money or his money, if there's no money, there's no relationship. If you want God's blessing, you need to respect your wife. And that's the, the most important thing I can say to you guys about family. But now I'm going to pick on the, on the ladies. How do you treat your husband? Like a kid. <laughs> like a kid. <laughs> I received the, this email. And this email, the title of the email was Advice to be passed on to your daughter. And since I have a daughter, I decided to read carefully, you know. Do I have some advice here on this email? And the first advice said, don't imagine you can change a man unless he's in diapers. <laughs> okay? <laughs> That's good advice. So, ladies, let me give you this advice. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can treat him like a boy, but not like a baby. Yeah. And, and you cannot change your man. So pray for him. That's this right. is why also scripture says in the <laughs> Ephesians uh, chapter 5 and verse 22. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Wow, this is a really, really, really tough one. Do you mean I need to submit my, to my husband as if he was God? Wow, this is really hard to understand. But the Bible tells the wives to see God in their husbands. So if you see God in your husband, you can easily submit to him. Now if you don't see God in him, that's going to be really a, a tough one. So in order to have our wives respecting this uh, uh, or submitting to this Bible verse, we need to be considerate and we need to understand, you know, uh, uh, about these things. And let me just give you this example. Sometimes we, we watch a soccer game. I like soccer, football. It's a great sport. And, uh, and it happens sometimes two, two team members collide and they fall. Well, if, if they're from the same team, there's no use in getting upset with one another. Right? If it's from the opposite team, you know, they roll on the floor and they hold the leg. Sometimes they, they even, even touch the guy. He's rolling on the I was watching a, a, a game this week was like this Bayern Munich. And, the, and the, the guys, the, those guys are actors. They were just rolling on the floor, ah! and then we see, we watch the replay, nothing happened. And they get upset with one another, and they do mean faces, and they put their chest to one another. And you know that sometimes that happens in the family too? Don't talk about church, but sometimes that happens in the family. But if you're, if you're the same team, you don't fight. You go there and pick them up, yes. you apologize. Because your battle is not against one another. So let me go to the next point. You need to grow up. And uh, there's a story about uh, a boy that came home from Sunday school. And his mother said, why don't you discuss at church? You're going to ask the kids, right? They're downstairs. And uh, the boy said, we talked about marriage. And his mother said, what did you learn about marriage? And the little boy thought for a while. And he said, well, we learned the verse, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope your kids don't come from downstairs telling the same thing. But many scriptures uh, talk to us about growth and growing in Christ is called maturity. There's different uh, scriptures. Uh, Ephesians 4, be no longer children, but grow in Christ. 2 Peter 3, 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Philippians 1 9, Paul prayed for their love to abound more and more. And many problems in the home result because a member of the home or the family acts like a boy <coughs> or acts like a little girl. If it's the wife, if it's the man acting like a little girl, that's another story. <laughs> but, but these things happen in the family. And we, we, we know the Bible said that. Uh, the, 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 the wife or the, the woman should leave the, the house of the, the father and the mother and 
join the man, not join the boy. So, so don't even think about getting married with someone that is childlike. And, and if your husband acts like a child, you, know, you need to pray for him and help him to grow. And uh, uh, likewise, we cannot grow and, and, and uh, feel the, the presence of God in our life. We need to grow in the grace or in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, let me just uh, uh, open the bracket, and I, I don't want to talk about this uh, too much, but I, I had it in my heart to tell you. Sometimes a, a family goes through hardships. It's 10 years of marriage, there's a crisis, or 12 years, or 25 years. And I've seen uh, people, uh, you know, just separating, there's divorces. At 20, after 25 years, the kids are gone and psh, the family is over. And I've seen it more and more and more. Now let me ask you, if there's a, a gas leak in your house, this is supposed to be a pipe with a gas leak, uh, what, what do you do? If you enter the house and you smell, you light a match, right? <laughs> no? No. If there's a gas leak, you open the windows, you open the doors, you're even afraid of what can happen. And you don't want to breathe, you go very gently. Now, certain times in our relationships, we have issues. And the atmosphere is heavy. And you arrive home from work, and you feel there's a heaviness. What are you going to do? Are you going to light a match? But most people do it. They do this. And as Christians, we should learn that sometimes you better stay away and if, if it's really heavy, the atmosphere, you know, take some time out. And there's something that, that Christians can do, which is uh, what it's called controlled separation. And this is written about in the, in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 7, 5, it says, Do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement, agreement for a limited time. So you can devote yourselves to prayer. I know people pick this verse to talk about sex and all these things. But let me give you a different perspective on the verse. If you're having problems in your marriage, maybe it's a good thing to do a separation. Yes. But when you do that separation, it's not to go to the bar to, to watch a hockey night in Canada. It's not to go, you know, to, to go to the Caribbean with, the, with your pal or do something like this. No, but you take some time to devote yourself to prayer. And you can do this with the mediator. And you write a contract. And you say, okay, this is not working. We're fighting all the time. Let's rethink how we're doing life together. So, and the, the way we should do this in a church, we come to the pastor and we talk. And the reason why we're seeing some increase in divorce rate in churches, it's because people don't go to the pastor. They go to counselors, they go here, they go there. And these people make money out of fights. Yeah. If there's no family fight, there's no money. Because there's no need for these people to go to those consultations. So they give wrong advice and, and sometimes they are even mean-spirited. So the expression here about deprive one another is about intimate relationships. And you can do a separation in different places or in the same house. But you can take time to rethink your wife, uh, your life, and to, to talk to your wife and you do a contract and you say, okay, now for the next month, we're going to dedicate ourselves to prayer. And this can uh, induce or provoke a change for better, for better. Uh, so, uh, what is this? Oh, oh uh, this, is, this is a flower shop. It's, it's, you know, when you do a bouquet of roses, uh, and I've seen this because, I, as I told you, I, I don't do the bouquet, but I pay someone else to do it. But I, I like to buy roses in places where they're good at doing the bouquet. If they're not good, I'm not going back uh, again. So, so what they do, they get the rose, and if there's dry petals, they, they remove uh, you know, a few of the petals to look fresh. Sometimes they even spray water. And then they put, you know, all those uh, uh, green leaves or baby breath, those, uh, and they mix all things so the bouquet will look uh, uh, perfect. And very often, married couples have conflicts, and we should remove some of the dry things, you know, the dry petals, 
so so the relationship can be restored and, um, and and this is very important now I like to finish the message by mentioning to you uh, five things that you can do to cultivate your friendship as a couple all right so if you don't have a, a, a pen just memorize these five things and uh, uh, before I, I talk about this certain times we're in a situation it's not that there's no love but we change we all change there's this story about um, a, a husband told by the, the the marriage counselor to try to be more considerate uh, to his wife and so one day he comes uh, home from work he's dressed up in a suit he has cologne he has a bouquet of flowers he has a box of candy in his hands he rings the doorbell he's standing there she opens the door and the wife looks at him and she says I can't believe this you know little Johnny has been throwing, throwing up the dishwasher just broke your parents called and now you show up home drunk <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know yeah. <laughs> so some, certain times you're not used to your husband being so nice and that's going to happen after today amen <laughs> amen? amen so husbands be nice to your wives do something different and, uh, and there's something we, we can do these five things are important one is number one it's a touch and uh, you, you know we, we, we touch things now we touch a screen and we expect things to happen yeah. right so we have the, the iPhones and the iPads and the, and the Android phones these things we touch and we expect things to happen and touching is very important I'm not speaking about touching sexually I'm speaking about the touch of friendship this is very important you know if you go uh, uh, out with your wife you know, give, give, your, give hands to her and you say oh, come on I'm 60 years old doesn't matter doesn't matter. Amen. Okay. Uh, so just touch or, or do a different kind of touch. Say something nice and touching enables communication. You know a child has to be touched. Scientists study uh, children that were untouched and they can even die. Yeah. A child can die if, if, if we don't touch that child. So this is really, really important. And so uh, touching will enable you to communicate with more than words. And certain times, you know, husbands just touch wives because they want something else. And, and the wife will say, don't touch me. And, and so they have this relationship in, in which touch, it's kind of, you know, they expect something to happen if there's just one touch. You know, I expect my phone to answer when I touch it. Okay? And, and, uh, but that's it. I'm, I'm not in love with my phone. You know, I can... Who cares if I touch it or if I touch a button or if I shake it to answer? It doesn't matter, but with my wife, I expect when I touch her that something will happen. And and relationship can really improve. Now, another thing is uh, uh, praise. So, uh, freely praise one another in private and in public. You know, when some, some, everybody else is complaining, oh, my husband, this, he smells and he does this and... and, and, and you're at the workplace, you can say, oh, my husband, he smells so good. What a handsome man. I was so lucky. You know, praise your husband. Praise one another. And you know that your tongue has the power to decide between life and death. So tell your wife how much you like her food. You, you can tell, you know, my mother cooked well, but you, you're awesome. You're much better than, 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 than my mother. Just tell, tell good things like this. And ladies, tell your husband... Honey, you're my hero. I cannot live without you. You know, you're, you're really my hero. Huh? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Just start practicing these things. Another thing, talk. Plan times to, to listen to one another. You need to plan these things because certain times, you know, and, and know when to talk and what to talk. You know, it's not that you're kissing, even this passionate kiss. And, and, and then you tell your wife, well, Benfica starts playing in 15 minutes. <laughs> you, you don't say stuff like this. Or, 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 or you, uh, you know, and, and wife's the same thing. You know, just enjoy and communicate with one another. Think about what you're saying. And, and, uh, and you can, you know, we, we men, we don't open up about, uh, about our lives. 
<laughs> we don't do it. And sometimes you may even, you don't want to know how, how she feels, but make the effort and sit down and, and ask her, how do you feel? How are things going? How's your job? What do you feel about this? And listen. And when you listen, you, you know, you're not watching TV or, or, you know, or reading the newspaper. Look her in, in her eye and, and take some time uh, to listen. Must make sense? And finally, talk your feelings. And this is, again, it's about talking and listening. But show gratitude and love. And make sure that the words you said are well understood. Okay? Make sure they're well understood. So, certain times, you know, couples that have been together for a long time, they don't communicate well. They don't. So things may have to be relearned. I, I hope this is a good introduction to the couples retreat, anyways. And, and we need to, to take care about these things. Oh, I was one below. All right, so let's go to the conclusion. You know, there's... There, there's a, a woman, she goes to the police station and she said, my husband disappeared. It's been three days, I don't know where he is. And, uh, and her neighbor is there with, with her and the policeman asked, ask, do you have a picture? Can you give a description? And she said, well, he is a six foot two, deep blue eyes, dark wavy hair, uh, athletic build, well groomed, sharply dressed, 185 pounds. And, and he's soft-spoken, and, the, and the, 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 the neighbor said, What are you saying? She looks at the policeman and he said, No, he's fat. <laughs> Five foot three, he's rude, smokes cigars, he's bald. He has a big mouth, never bathes, dresses slo sloppy. His uh, teeth are terrible, he's mean to the children. And the policeman looks and, and she says, Well, who wants that old that man back? I mean. <laughs> so, so sometimes, let, let me finish this message by telling that roses have thorns. And if you have a, a, a relationship, you have your husband, your wife, maybe he's not here. He doesn't want anything, uh, uh, he won't, doesn't want anything with the things of God, he doesn't want anything with church. And, uh, and you feel like your marriage is broken. But let me tell you, roses have strength and beauty, but the thorns are there for a purpose. If you just focus on the thorns, you're losing of sight the beauty of the whole rose. Okay? So, and, and of course we can't just break the thorns and make the bouquet perfect like, like the florist will do. But uh, uh, we need to understand that our marriage needs protection and we need to climb to a higher height. I would like to read this uh, last verse of scripture, it's a long scripture, so it's uh, right there on the screen, but let me mention it, mention it to you. Uh, Paul was talking about revelations, and he said, I, I got this, this revelation of a, of a messenger of Satan uh, that comes to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. And verse 8, he said, three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that he should leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul says, that, therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. Look at the things that are mentioned here. Because it's talking about what? A thorn in the flesh. So there is discussion about what this thorn was, if it was infirmity, uh, people say, oh, it's because Paul was uh, uh, losing his sight, he was almost blind. Uh, other people say this was a, a person that w was coming against him. I don't know what it was. Nobody knows, in fact. But we know that this thorn uh, uh, originating on verse uh, 10, weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. Do you have those in your uh, house? Do you have those things, those, those problems, you know? Persecution, insults, uh, you know, all these things. Do they happen in your house? Sometimes it, it's your kids, they come and insult you. Huh? Sometimes it's, it's your wife and she deeply insults you. And, and all sorts of things that, that happen, you know, between people that live under the same roof. But Paul says something, I have this, it's like a thorn in my flesh. 
because these things keep happening to me. But I've learned this, that the power of God comes upon me and it's, uh, the expression is for when I am weak, I am strong. And this is kind of like makes nonsense. It's, it's, it's a nonsense. <coughs> when I'm weak, I am strong. Why is he saying these things? Because he learned a secret of a Christian life under the anointing and the power of God. Hallelujah. And the secret is we don't run away from hardships. Yes, right. Because they will come after you. Some people think, well, I'm going to leave this woman and I'm going to get married with another one. Oh, yeah. And then after the fifth one, they realize the problem was not the first one. The problem was you, <laughs> was the, the, that person. Yeah. And we see this over and over and over. And in the relationship within the family, these things will happen. It's like a thorn in your flesh. I even heard people saying, oh, I have this husband. It's the cross that Jesus, that God gave him. <laughs> no, it's not the cross. It's the thorn. You see, when Jesus was crucified, he died for you and me. Yes. And he was crowned with thorns. He was crowned with thorns. And he shed his blood from, from those piercings of the thorns. Symbolizing that the blood of Christ is powerful enough you know, to bring healing to the area of your thoughts. And also to tell you that it doesn't matter how heavy things are in your relationships. The blood of Jesus oh, is powerful to yes. change things around you. Yes, so yes. you've heard some things that are common sense today. Some of uh, the things that I told you, it's biblical advice, but more than common sense and advice. I'd like to finish uh, this morning by praying for every family here.